Here they come out onto one of the very biggest stages of them all, bedecked in their special big game away strip. The top of the cheeks from the most experienced campaigners, the Mohunks, the World Cup winners, through to the Cecilia Tuipilottis of the squad, the 20-year-olds. They're all in this together. They call themselves the circus and they love to entertain. Harlequins, the hosts, languishing in eighth. They've lost three on the spin and need a foothold in the standings if they're to avoid their worst ever finish. But all they will be focused on right now are the next 80 minutes. A chance for Rachel Burford and her women to pit themselves against the reigning champions and in a ground that means so much to this great club. The magic number, the current world record for a women's club game. Just another glass ceiling there for the shattering. Emily Scarrett, you've won a World Cup alongside Rachel Burford. How will she have worked to help Quinn to harness these emotions positively today? Yeah, she'll have definitely been having conversations with the girls. Just the biggest thing, and Burford has always done this throughout her career, is just trying to enjoy those moments. You know. You might not get many more of them, you might get loads of them, but the point is you just don't know, so you have to embrace every single opportunity you get and tell you what, this place is bouncing at the moment, it's so cool. It is bouncing in here, and we really do have the lineup to match. You can sense Hunt's excitement, she lives for these moments. George Selworth making his first league appearance of the season, having been busy overseeing matches in the Championship and out in Dubai and Cape Town on the Seven Series. Discipline's been a bit of a thorn in the sides of these two teams recently, so he will need that whistle. Harlequins are the game's jesters. It's entertainers and it's captivators, but Gloucester Harbury call themselves the circus. Only one of them can take the spoils this afternoon in the Twickenham Big Top. So, settle on in. First turn over. Quinn's receiving the kickoff for this one, playing in that black strip. A bit of a twist on the traditional quarters. And it's the reigning champions playing from left to right in pink and white. Let go. Don't move forward, well, it's please. A deep kick off, and it's Wait. topped back to Ellie Kildan, who sends it long in return. Clakey George, the Welsh international, beneath that one, and now the other fullback, Emma Singh. Two of the best in the business. One of the many tasty head-to-heads we've got to enjoy this afternoon. An early carry from Bethel and Lewis, another one of the Welsh women in Sean Lynn's title holders. Georgia waits. The service is crisp as usual from Hunt, and she just delays the kick off the right boot. It's going to trickle nicely into touch. Oh, it's gathered. Beth Wilcock making fools of all of us by tiptoeing down the touchline to keep that in field. Sing. Snagged by Kill Dunn. There's Mackenzie Carson, newly arrived from Saracens. Advantage. As if Gloucester Hartbury needed another world-class forward in their ranks. Now Beckett with the offload, Lewis with the pass as she tumbles to turf. Bulls out on the far touchline, here is Lund. Oh, it's a brilliant start, isn't it, by Gloucester, reclaiming that initial kickoff. Thanks. Harlequin's got their mitts back on Second it. Go, hands in. But then Clayton George, she's been so good all of last season in that title-winning attempt. Brilliant kick from her, so much space in that backfield. Mia Venna chasing after it. 
just stays in. But just showing again that back balance from Gloucester. Went through some phases, decided to put it on the toe. The and now in a really promising position down on this near side. They're the quickest starters in the league. They love the opening 20 of matches. So what a blistering opening this would be if with Neve Jones throwing at the line out, they can wrangle something here. Move. It's down crisply and cleanly by that new woman, Castellucci. We'll talk plenty about her this afternoon, I suspect. I've got pink to now, ground here. Pink pack just begins to creep forward to it. Pelosu has it. She's barreling towards the line. Brought down, just short, it's shipped on to Hurd. The stutter step finds Jones. What a return for the Welsh international. What a start for the reigning champions. What a start. And if we're honest, one of about four of the backs could have scored that try in the end. They had a huge overlap on that left-hand side. Tatiana Hurd doing the right thing and just tipping it to Hannah Jones, who is in much more space. But it all came from that driving mall in the first place. Brilliant, brilliant setup from them. So, so good at it. And you can just see Cecilia Tuipilotto at the back there, just controlling thing, realises getting a bit close to that touchline, so she goes on it by herself. So powerful. That draws in all the Quinns defenders. And then it's a really, really Thanks, simple finish for Hannah Jones. Great start for Gloucester. Five points quick as you like, and now Singh endeavouring to make it a full compliment. She always takes her time, Emma Singh, but she made it count. She does, but she's a brilliant kicker. Great to see Cecilia Tuipilotu back in the squad, and this is exactly why. In the tight, so powerful. Gloucester will be trying to get her hands on ball as much as possible. Kildan gets us back underway, and that's gathered by Castellucci, who somehow frees an elbow and lobs that back in field. It's Venna for the first time this afternoon. And now Hurd straightens. Player. The athlete who took an opportunity in the Six Nations this year with two hands, the injury to Amber Reid, allowing her to prove to the Red Rose coaches just how instrumental she'll be in the midfield going forwards. Monaghan next to have a trundle, Ireland's co-captain. International skippers right through the squad of Gloucester Hartbury. Georgia waits and spirals that, having to cleave between Kildun and Scott. Kildun with a little pop up to Wilcott, but it's well read. Yes. First chance for Harlequins to flex their muscles. Yeah, and a decent defensive set, forced Gloucester into that kick, gives them the opportunity to have a bit of time ball in hand, which they've just not had yet so far in this game. Well, they're making a mess of it Backwards, at the breakdown, and that just an unforced error from Harlequins allows the ball to be stripped straight back. Hunt on to Monaghan. Patience from Gloucester wow. Hartbury, and then the pass is flat as you like out to Lund. Clakey George just has a Mary Poppins bags worth of tricks. You never know what she's going to dish out next, and that was a bullet. Advantage, and then back we come for the penalty. It's a call from the sideline, number 12, tackle off the ball. Well, Gloucester with another penalty there. Quinns just need to be careful, but look at this movement of the ball. It's really simple. Okay, we'll keep it on. Just like <laughs> George just rips that, doesn't she? Puts it out in front of Rachel Lund, gives her an opportunity to get some width on the ball, chase down that five metre channel. Quinn's just got to be really careful. I know it's early doors, but they can't afford to keep giving penalties away because it's going to be a really tough afternoon in their own 22 if they do. 
four yellow cards and a red card already this season in just four outings and 23 penalties when they lost to Saracens a few weeks ago. It's non-negotiable these days, Amy Turner said in the week. They've got to be better. Three can't change. Advantage. And there's another penalty Three. and now a chance for the hosts to defend for all they're worth because Gloucester Hartbury will throw the dice here. Singh places it backwards and Hunt decides to go it alone. She's got Neve Jones in support. Beckett wants it, but instead advantage. it's through the hands of Matthews. To Ipilotu, who just always bags a couple of extra feet through contact. Short, patient, punchy play. Ball surely over the try line there, but just about held out. No advantage. Back for the penalty. Over the line there. It was a good setup from that initial, and a change of bind. initial more, and you could hear as soon as the referee's arm went out, Gloucester players saying, free ball, free ball. It was a great That's out of the back, back from Tatiana Heard. Emma Singh just couldn't quite get it away to Mia Venner on this right hand side. Use the five metre line, please. She was about 30 metres away, in fairness to her. But again, just really good drills from Gloucester. Again, Cecilia Tuacolotto at the back. She's obviously the big driving force. Big power game at the back of that line out. Jones to Castellucci, but that time the drills don't Someone stick. And these are the moments that Harlequins have to really Shot get after. Up, you know, the mm. mistakes, the penalties that they get, the turnovers that they get, you know, really bring some Shot energy to something that is such a huge, up, big occasion to them. It means so much to them. Not Obviously going 7-0 down early doors, not the ideal start. Nee Jones is a, a class before. operator. Keep that space. Not sure she'll throw too many more of those this game. <laughs> Connie Powell throwing against her former club, signed for Harlequins from Gloucester Hartbury over the summer. In pursuit of a little bit more right game on, time. Right gets the start backwards. today, gets that away cleanly. And now it's over to the heavies to buy themselves enough space to exit here. No. Back it goes, kill Duns on exit duties. Gave that a good thwack. Great kick. What a brilliant exit that is. You think they're right down in Coffin Corner over there. They hadn't really worked themselves too the much of an yeah, angle. Please. Thank you. Great to see Ellie Kildun stepping up as that primary kicking option. Amy Turner looking on. She knows all about how to exit from her own 22, but brilliant kick from Ellie. Got themselves really, really well out of that danger area. This time, Ball. Jones gets it to stick. That one doesn't, though. George with plenty of time to just scan her surroundings, gather that and decide that she's going to have a chug this time. Jones is in over the top of her. Sing to Lund off her wing. Mia Venner just drops it onto a toe, manages to keep it in play. Kildarn finds herself with a pile of work Wait. to do. Manages it well. Wait. Use it. Who oh, Robinson? Sister of Emily, still it. seeing out that ban for a back in. headbutt against and Saracens front, a couple please. of weeks Wait. ago. So there's just the one Robinson to contend with Take today. Out. But that one that Kildon would love to have again. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. Don't know whether she knew whether the breakdown was inside or outside the 22. <laughs> Amy's not very good at poker, is she? Just what I was thinking, no. <laughs> Again, it's, it's those opportunities where you can relieve pressure. The previous kick from Ellie, brilliant kick down See, that touch line. Just right gives Harlequins an opportunity to hustle them as Connie powdered off the back of that line out. Backwards. Again, things scrappy at the line out for Gloucester Hartbury, but they're in all the right areas. They can afford these Clear little release, mistakes. Quinns haven't had a visit down the other end, Clear which release. means that Mohant seven. can go quickly. She is so wily. Such a nose for the try line. 
What a shot. That was Bryony Cleal taking no prisoners with that short-range defence. But now, Suip Pelosu bull in a China shot towards the whitewash. Hunt ships it on to Carson. Driven backwards, crucial defensive shots coming in from the Harlequins here. Now this is Matthews. A woman who just oozes class. Harlequins will feel like they've been defending for the entirety of this fixture so far as Tua Pelosi adds another to her tally. Still got the advantage, Gloucester. Gloucester Hartbury playing with a free hit here. As Beckett burrows beneath the posts. On top of it there. A metre or two to make up here, hunting for that second oh. score. Now this is Monaghan, there is Monaghan, there's the second. It's been a cherry and white siege at Twickenham so oh, far. Thanks, Dan. Well, it's a brilliant oh. score again from Gloucester, really patient build-up in that 22 and super clinical. But it all started from that Mohan tap penalty. She knew that Harlequin's players are in no hurry to retreat back 10 metres. So this is the penalty that they get. Mo looking up straight away, knows they're not 10 metres. Bryony Cleal makes no attempt. Like I said in the brief, we'll keep an eye on So they're already on another penalty advantage and then they just work through the phases and then it's just a little bit too easy really. It's a bit soft from Harlequins on the line. Sam Monaghan, good body height, good leg drive, great finish. Harlequins now, I'd kick this I'd kick this restart long, I'd get back down there, I'd get some field position. Even if you don't have the ball, just get in a good area of the field, build some confidence, get through some phases. Just have some time to breathe. It's a lovely strike from Emma Singh. Note perfect so far. She was such a thorn in the side of Harlequins the last time these two sides met. 18 points the fullback took that day. Gloucester Hartbury doubling up last year. They put 100 combined points on Harlequins. 100 to 36, the aggregate score there. Well, only they didn't take your advice. A short restart. Look, I'm all about a short restart. If you're going to kick it short, let's get someone after it and trying to get the ball back. That's the whole point of why you do a short restart. Um, it's a brilliant kick from Ellie Kildern. Yes, admittedly, this one is pushing it on the touchline. I think you can actually see the indent that hits the chalk. Therefore, we'll take the scrum option, please. They have gone back for the straight out. I thought the the touch judge initially, the assistant referee, had put his flag up. But again, just gifting Gloucester now another brilliant. Attacking opportunity in the middle of the field. One of the best nines in the world at nine. You've got phenomenal kickers either side of this scrum in Clakey George and Emma Singh. The man who knows all about the big game, Ross Chisholm, played in a couple for Harlequins over his Crouch. decorated career here. We're hoping to hear a little bit from Ross Five. later on. The man who's been tasked with sharpening that Harlequins attack this season. So we're hoping for a bit of ball. Come up. Something to attack with. Both sides. I'm going to need you to match the weight. You can't just absorb the hit. Do it again. Crouch. Bind. Brace. So right in the centre Set. of Twickenham. Free kick, free engage. The biggest arena Twickenham. that so okay. many of these so players will have. You. The next one is going to be a penalty. Will have played in. Bryony Cleal deemed at fault there. And one for pre engage. We'll do it again. Let's go. I think he's explaining that the two free kicks are for different things, otherwise it would have been a penalty on that second one for Gloucester. You could hear Mo giving him a little word just around. I think two means a penalty, sir. Mo Hon, chatting to the ref, surely not. Bind. Set. Hunt 
feeds the scrum in the front row advantage. of Carson Jones. Antwi Pilotu wins the advantage. That's the penalty. That's the fifth penalty that Harlequins have conceded in 17 minutes. We spoke earlier around the numbers they conceded in, a, in previous games. You normally try and keep it to single figures where you can. Um, you know, 10, 11 at most. That kick hasn't gone out. Gives Harlequins a bit of a reprieve. A gift to Quinns and to Emers, only too happy to oblige. Pops it back in to Wilcock. It's well read, though, by Gloucester as Powell tips it on against her former club. Bit of urgency about this attack yeah. from the hosts as Robinson finds Scott. Now this is Cleal, eager to make amends after that free hit at the scrum. Down the short side they go. Powell to Tuima, and Dummy, the little shimmy, not fooling anyone. To a Pelosi has her. And now this is Brown. She's been popping up at prop, and at back row this season, and there is the back row in her trundling upfield. It's stripped. What a turnover. Monaghan, the try scorer. Sets up Hunt for this dink Good over effect, the top. Yeah. We'll give them the line. No Hunt disappointed with that outcome in terms of the kick. Good decision. But again, just Harlequins just now starting to give themselves a bit of a foothold. Shauna Brown really strong in the carry. Looks like she's been whacked to start with. Great leg drive. And then Alex Matthews, the speed at which she gets back, swings her hips around over the ball. Doesn't just get a penalty pole, no, she actually steals the ball clean. Really good contest around that breakdown so far. Lost in Hartbury going coast to coast. Such width once they get those passes clicking. Now there's options up, but Beckett just loses her footing. Crashes down on the pristine Twickenham turf. Herds thinks she's spies an opening, hasn't done, but puts a dent in the Quinn's defensive line. Across the face goes George to her fellow Welshwoman, Lewis. Sam on a leg drive. Castellucci, the Spaniard. Get up. And Lewis is acting scrum half this time. Bonner thought she'd spied Bonner. the intercept. She absolutely loves those. Herds, now there's space. Little. Matthews, out to sing. Jinx it through, too much on it. That's gonna go dead. <laughs> Tell you what, Sarah Bonner has been doing that all season. She's a bit of a 22. queen of an intercept. This one she doesn't quite get right, but brilliant hands from Gloucester okay. on the turnover. Emma Singh realizes there's nobody in that backfield, just a bit heavy. It's not a bad decision at all. Give yourself an opportunity to have a foot race. I thought there was a good chance of that intercept. Just there, a little bit heavy on the touch, but tell you what, Sarah Bonner, she'd back herself to run the length, wouldn't she, if she caught that intercept? <laughs> She did it against Japan in WXV down in South Africa about a month or so ago. It was a perler. Well, no one's quite finding touch today, so that's back in field. Breathless stuff at Twickenham. As the reigning champions lead Harlequins, the 2021 champions, by 14 points to nil. Scott scuttles through the backfield, manages to get that clear, and at last we have a chance to breathe. Again, it's really smart from this Thank Gloucester you. team. It's just constant pressure at the moment in terms of where the game is being played. Clanky George with that, again, just kick, pushing it into that corner, goes over the head of Emily Scott. She's got a phenomenal boot on her. They call her 50-22 at half, uh, Gloucester <laughs> Hartbury. That's her nickname because of, well, it's pretty self-explanatory, the amount that she hits. Easy to forget that George is just 23. Capped at 17. Option, Just going from strength to strength. Player of the match, of course, against like Exeter a couple of weeks ago. Up, Hasn't yet had much of a run out in a Wales jersey. Is that something that might change in the near future? I think it has to come soon. Um, obviously, with the recent retirement of, of Eleanor Snowshill, obviously mm. prolific in that shirt for a number of years for Wales. But I think her form, certainly for Gloucester, is definitely made that, made well, sure that she's put a lot of for that jersey and I think she just needs a bit of time in it you know you invest in, invest time in someone and I think you'll reap the rewards from it it's Matthews who finds herself on litter picking duty there manages to clean up another scrappy line out from the visitors but the hands out to the wing are slick 
Harlequins scrambling defensively. Hunts through to Jones. Powerful, she might. Good opportunity to just catch there. Bagged herself an intercept there, but can only knock it on. So there's release, a scrum release. advantage. Going the way of Hunt and her pink scrum ladies. Monaghan with the oh, offload. Okay. That's why they call her Sammy Bill to a Pilotti. Oh, it's release, delightful please. from the reigning release. champions. Their fourth trip into Blue Harlequins release, 22. Release. Don't touch her. Two of the previous three have resulted in tries. What can they enact here? Beckett pivoting through contacts. They've got options. Matthews is lurking on the far touchline, but it's this way they go. The pass is a peach. One-handed from Castellucci, dotted down by Venner. Plus the Harper are having things all their own way. They haven't just crashed Harlequin's party today. They've torn down the bunting and they've drunk all the punch. Tell you what, they haven't half come out of the traps. The way they're moving the ball at the moment, just from width to width. This from, so from Sam Monahan through the middle, gets her arms free. Brilliant offload to Cecilia Tupolotti, who's always going to continue to take metres, but just trying to keep it alive. This pass from Tatiana Hurd, brilliant ball. Emily Scott again shooting out of the line, trying to put some pressure on. Castellucci looked like she wasn't going to give it <laughs> right up until the last minute. But it's a brilliant finish in the end. Mia Venner, we spoke about her before the game. She didn't have to do a huge amount in that one, but on the scoreboard again. Her seventh oh, try of the season, if we can buy the Allianz Cup and the yeah, DWR. Well, Thank you. Small gap. Yeah, I think and then adjustment shifting. made by both teams following that. We'd like to stay on their marks, yes, we so would. we'll work hard on it. Wouldn't be surprised yeah, to see her back at Twickenham in the not too distant future wearing a rose on her chest. It bends wickedly, but just drifts wide. Score remains at 19, but Gloucester Hartbury one away from the bonus point. OK, I'll keep an eye on them. The two I've seen have been OK. I'd go long off this one, Claire. <laughs> if you keep saying it, Emily, it'll happen. Oh, no. Bonner oh, bounces, pop. There's a knock-on and then you're in front of that knock-on, so you're offside. Sit up, just coming unstuck. Look, but if that's the tactic, I'm, I'm here for it. You know, Sarah Bonner gets up on that occasion, she gets her hands on the ball, she's giving herself an opportunity to get the ball back. Didn't quite work out, so her players have just got to be smart to understand where they are in relation to everybody else who's just touched the ball. Again, a soft, frustrating penalty when you're potentially, you know, starting to put Gloucester under a little bit of pressure in terms of they've not caught the kick-off clean. It's just too tempting sometimes, isn't it? But it's just that having that greater awareness of How many, everything please? that's going on around Five. you. Five. We'll maintain the gap. Work hard. Stay there. Jones to Castellucci. We're seeing that pattern over and over already. The 21-year-old new signing shouldering such a burden. No Zoe Allcroft at the moment for the reigning champions, so they need a line-out target. Looks like pink to go. And who better to pick than your basketball playing six foot one new look forward? It's pretty handy, doesn't she? Yeah, I know the, the Gloucester okay. guys we were speaking about it earlier weren't we really a lot off, of please. promise in her, showing a huge amount of talent at a really young age. George. I've got one split in the scene there. So Andrew Ford, the attack coach for Gloucester Harbury, he's an absolute rugby pig sides, yeah. apparently, watches anything and everything. He caught her playing for Bobigny in France okay, yeah, a couple of it years a ago. A it's been two years of work, but they got her over, they've signed her. And one of the coaches was saying to me a little bit earlier on, they wouldn't be surprised to see this young woman winning World Player of the Year inside the next decade, and that is some prediction some prediction there's some pressure isn't it <laughs> i wonder if they've said that yeah. to her um, but yeah i mean you don't say things like that lightly especially in a team okay, littered go. with internationals and class like gloucester has so yeah really looking forward to see how she develops and how she progresses in this team and she couldn't be learning from anyone better than zoe oldcroft you, know, you talk about mentors and mentees and inspirations i think she's got some phenomenal ones in that gloucester pack Alex Matthews, Sam Monaghan on the field today, Zoe Ocroft, former world player of the year. I mean, I don't know how many more 
inspirational figures you need around you to, to really push you on. Okay, time on. Crouch. Bind. Set. The organ just ringing out around Twicken, and they need to get behind their women. They need to find Taking something in. here. Front, Kill done. Right. Leathers it, not field. Vanna just pointing to her right, wants Sing there, but instead has to pirouette and pop it up to her fullback. The back to back PWR fullback of the year. Just nailed down that Dream Team jersey, Sing. And now Lund, her first start on the wing. So often in the midfield. Popping out wide today so that Hannah Jones, try scorer, could get her way back into the starting 15. Hunt on to George. This is Beckett with the offload. The handling from Gloucester Hartbury today has been something to behold. On the rampage, sniffing out that bonus point score. They want five points from this fixture and they're impatient. They want it before half time. Venner takes a trio of quartered jerseys to stop her in her tracks. Jones on to Monaghan. A pair of Irish internationals linking up and gaining an extra couple of metres to it. Pilotu will take some stopping. Oh, they are feeling it today, Gloucester Harbury. It's just absolutely ruthless from Gloucester at the moment. Five visits to the 22, four tries scored. It's so, so clinical and it's so simple. They're not doing anything too flash. They go to width really early, really nicely. And then it's this from Sarah Beckett that's the real inroad, really hard line, manages to get the offload away to Mackenzie Carson. Oh, good job. Battles through again, and then it's just going back to type. Flaky George driving to the line, little one on the on the hip almost to Cecilia Tupolotu, who I'm telling you now, you will not stop from there in that much space. But it just looks a little bit too easy at the moment for Gloucester. Harlequins have got to, that kick chase that they had earlier on, they've got to put some more energy into that. They've got to get themselves up the field. And then really sort out this defensive structure at the moment because they've got to find a win, whether it's at the breakdown, whether it's going really hard at a breakdown in terms of turnovers or just slowing the ball down, but they've got to change something. We heard you talking in the build-up a little bit about Mo Hunt's response to her omission from the World Cup and how she's got herself back in the Red Roses fold, earned herself a contract. Sarah Beckett's another one who responded to not going to New Zealand by just discovering unprecedented levels. Yeah, and you react one of two ways to moments in your career like that. And I think both of them have reacted in the very best possible way. They were part of a premiership winning side last year, so I don't know what else they could have done. And, you know, sometimes they define, moments like that define your career, and I think for both of them, they've done backwards. Harlequin's got the short kickoff back as well, Claire. Brilliant take. Managed it, sevens style. Tackle, release, roll away. A little kickoff yes. the ball back. Finally, a chance for Harlequin's. To work that way towards that oh so elusive 22. Well, turnover is legal. There's the turnover. Gloucester Hartbury have it back. The Queens of Queens home. Taken back into the 22. Emma Singh has got such a cannon of a boot on her. Kildan lets it bounce and now ball in two hands sizes up Mia Venner. She's the most elusive woman in the PWR, all the stats have been immense this season. Beating nine defenders every time she laces Let, up. Let go now, Gosta. Just a glimpse there of what she might be able to do for Harlequins today if they can only get her the ball in space. To Ema, flat and on to Bonner. It's a meaty clean out from Caitlin Leaney. The Wallaroo kill done, forced to scamper backwards. Timing good. 
in field she goes and Gloucester Hartbury have it back whose forwards coach Dan Murphy has stood by to have a little chat with us great out okay. in fact well, you are, let's yeah. have a chat with him now Dan thank you so much Thanks. for joining us no worries now you've played in one of these but for the opposition you've been here in Gloucester colours what's more nerve-wracking being here as a coach or being here as a player Sitting up here watching is uh, is a bit more nerve-wracking, to be honest. You can't, uh, Gloucester, don't you move. can't impact Stay the game as mark, much please. sitting up here. Well, you say it's nerve-wracking. It's been some start from like. the circus. What have you made of Closing the opening in. 30? Have plans Closing been put into action effectively? Yeah, we've been good. We've been clinical all the into uh, Quinn's half. Um, we do need to clean up our restart a bit, and this is Quinn's can show what they can do when they've got the ball in there uh, we, to make sure we get, the, get our restart. restart cleaned up and, and we'll, be, uh, we'll be okay. What is it like as a forwards coach having the likes of Carmen Castellucci and Cecilia Tuipilotto at your disposal each week? It must be an awful lot of fun. Well, we've temporarily lost Dan, but perhaps that's for the best because Harlequins, for the first time this afternoon, look a little bit menacing. It's their first entry into the 22. Onside. Wilcock Jordan has it beneath the sea of pink and white bodies, and now this is Leany Robinson. Onto Leany now. Cecilia Tupolossi is receiving a bit oh, of attention. Harlequins have the advantage. It's the penalty. They call Just for calm. Brian Cleal has it now. Just so much more energy in that attack, and they've off. Really kill tied up moment. Quinn's <laughs> opting to go quickly. Penalty, and we've got a penalty advantage now to use. Lost the Hartbury defending with 14. Tua Pelosi is still getting a bit of help from the medics. Harlequin thundering close to the line as they've been all day. But held up. Crucial from Gloss the Hot Brim. Was that Sarah Beckett at the heart of it? Well, at yeah, first no look, I saw a right, ball on the right. on the try line just as we listen in. Gloss the three HIA, thank you. Are we going back for the not ten on the It looks like it's a try. I'm yeah, just confirming. If it's, if it's not, absolutely. Yeah, that looks pretty conclusive to me. I think that's a, an immediate reach as she's. Yeah, been George, tackled. I've got a decision for you. Yeah, you, yeah, you can stick with your on-field decision of a try. Okay, thank you, Dan. Well, TMO, Dan Jones likes it. So too does Ref George Selwood. Harlan wins are hot and running, and the Stoop has something to dance about. Well, this is why we're here in Twickenham. The big game. So much noise. And something finally for the Harlequins fans to get on their feet about. But in the build-up play to that, there were so many nice interactions from Ellie Kilder and Lagi Tawima, Sarah Bonner. Just moving the point of contact a little bit more, getting themselves an inroad into this. And then it's just that patience that they've probably not had yet. Gloucester conceding their third penalty, quick tap, get on the front foot. And now they're on the scoreboard as well. Excellent finish from Hannah Sims, the former Wasp, the former Bristolian, who's become so essential at Harlequins. And the noise here has just racketed up, hasn't it? Yeah, all of a sudden the party started to start, I think. Great clearance from Ellie Kildern. That's that's how you, you know, respond to conceding a uh, sorry, scoring a try. Get yourself back right back in a good area of the field. They spent so much time defending. Really tough areas of the field. An opportunity now to put in a big defensive set. Yeah, no worries, Dan. Thanks. Hold the space, good. Jones picking up Castellucci again, and now George through to Beckett. The tip on pass is deft. Right in the centre of the field as Tuima makes a nuisance of herself at the breakdown. Hurt onto Singh, who's famed for her mazy running, but hits hard. And so too does Venner as she looks to get the offload away. Somehow that ball is still alive. Hurt with the hitch kick. 
Now into the wide channels, all the bodies to the open side for Gloucester Hartbury hunting for a fifth with five minutes remaining on the first half. Castellucci, all six foot one of her, just stopped in her tracks there. George wants to sing. Gloucester play with such width, don't they? They're going from five metre channel to five metre channel. Yes, they're going through the middle at the same time, but it just stretches this Harlequin's defence so much through these phases. Making gain line each and every time, all they there. And on characteristic Aaron Eve Jones, only able to watch as the ball's knocked on and a little bit of dessert. Number seven. Here we go. Number seven. No, no, no. What do you think? Well, Harlequin's front row have all agreed Go amongst themselves pre-game. You push the player, it's a penalty against you. But they want to go quickly every time. Just wait till that defence is set, please, in those situations. Just a little bit on the ground. Neve Jones obviously frustrated. Thank She's you. knocked that ball on. Bryony Cleal rarely takes a backward step. Bethany Lewis getting involved. Oh, that's what we want to see. Loads yeah, of passion work, involved in games like please. today means so much to the players. Edge of the line. Hold your space. Don't move. Off that mark. Edge of the line. I think you've got to pick slightly better fights because Neve Jones might only be five foot two, but she's got six foot energy. Good contest in the air. Pal's throw disrupted the by Lewis. The silent assassin, Sean Lynn, calls her because she's so softly spoken, but why does she get through a pile of work? Her opposite number, Abby Fleming. Two of Wales's most instrumental loose forwards in tandem. Now Cleal at the top of Matthews, who's swiftly to her feet. Gampers around the breakdown. Back we come. Yeah, you're on it there, George. Knock on in the line outs. Coming back we'll for that initial knock on advantage. in the line out. Bethan Lewis gets up so well, arguably coming across the line out, but doesn't quite manage to keep a hold of it. But again, it's just pressure nonetheless. But then. Harlequins really start to get into a little bit of play. Some short lines from Bryony Cleal. So much to enjoy on TNT over the next couple of days. I mean, starting right now, this is a double header. But up next okay, is crowds. Saints up against Sharks. Battle of two high flying outfits at the gardens. Just a Five. point in between those two in the standings. Set. And Saracen's up against Falcons. I mean, any game boasting Juan Martin Gonzalez and Adam Radwan is a game that you should definitely be watching. On the Getting the edge at the scrum there, though. Thanks, Pete. Lost the front rows, getting up and feeling a little bit aggrieved at that one, as all front rows do when they concede a penalty. But really important passage now as we hear this Harlequins crowd really getting into it just before half time. Oh, they scored no. the last try. Can they get something else on the board before half time just to buoy them up coming out into that second half? Well, it is a game of momentum and penalties swinging every which way and the trick play is sumptuous from Harlequin. Suddenly they find themselves 10 metres out with 60 seconds left to use this. Good. It's their second visit to the 22, but this one goes begging. Hunt is well wrapped up there. It's OK. Just slipped up around the neck. It's only a penalty. It's a Just lovely variation up. on this line out. Just around the front, Sarah Bonner so good at offloading through the tackle back to Connie Powell. Just gives them a really good inroad. Then it's Bryony Cleal again on the front foot. It makes such a difference. And then it's just a little bit of handling inaccuracies. The ball actually went backwards, but it's Alex Matthews who reacts quick enough. She's the one diving on the floor, picking up those loose balls. Just a little bit more desire from that Gloucester side in those moments. George, you need a sensible gap from Gloucester so we don't get a throw across. Yeah, OK. You call them in sensible gap. You can close it if it's going to be this big. Adjust if needed. 
James' throws ambitious and bounces just out of the fingertips of Lewis. Powell is at the base of that one as Brown pops it back inside. And just to find Lochner. Tackle. This now is Fleming. Another visit for Harlequins as half time beckons. The clock has gone red. And the hosts desperate to make the most of this one. Burford up the guts of Jones and of Matthews. Robinson onto Lochner. Earning her first start for Harlequins and now the try scorer. Let go, Dossa. Lost now. Sims beneath that. Clear the weight. So too player. does Brown and Burford. There are some big, meaty Ball carriers away, wanting to get in on the action. Advantage. And now the advantage. Surely Harlequins need to make this one count. If they could go into half time against the reigning champions with back to back scores. They might just start to believe. Just need to stay really patient. Yes, they have the advantage, but keep working them over. Really earn that right, because you know you're always coming back for it as we are, as we are doing now. Ten phases there, which they couldn't buy earlier on in this fixture. They're really starting to find some momentum. They go quickly. And speaking of quick, here is Ellie Kildun. Ripped backwards by Pink. But the ball's ripped and Singh decides enough is enough. That one is heading to the stands. She calls time on proceedings and the pair of them will head to the sheds. Gloucester Harbury very much in the driver's seat in this opening fixture of Big Game 15. The bonus point wrapped up. Scores from Jones, Monaghan, Venner and Tuipulotu. The Sims striking back for the hosts. It's half time at Twickenham. Gloucester Harbury lead 26 points to seven. She's back, Cecilia Tuipulotu, looking slightly the worse for wear, but passing her HIA with flying colours, and, well, Harlequins will be pretty gutted about that because she was monstrous in the opening 40. Well, they're starting with their tails up, the host skill done, short restart, gathered by Scott, and then a carry from Lini right up onto the cusp of the 22. This is better from the hosts, the 2021 champions. Had a really tough start to this one, but just started to work their way back into it towards the yeah, end of that first cool. passage of play. Tackle about the ball, get the timing right, please. Well, it's a good job nobody listens to me in terms of what to do at a restart, because <laughs> Harlequins have stuck with it, and it's a brilliant take. Emily Scott gets off the line, just right in between the gap. Gloucester have got to do better than that. They referenced it earlier, didn't they, when we spoke to them? got to look after those restarts it's such an easy source of possession and in, in that instance nobody reacted nobody moved and Harlequins really bright start to this second half really great opportunity for them now there was a little bit of drizzle at yep. half time but that's passed there's a neat little shower just hydrate the pitch oh. it stops conditions are immaculate we haven't seen the trick play this time at the line out. This time it's simple. It's up the jumper and up the guts. Gloucester Hartbury looked to have got a bit of a counter shove on there, but Quinn's managed to recycle it. Robinson up and on to Cleal, who takes some stopping from there. Back it goes. On side. Advantage offside. And Robinson happy to just stand back, draw the advantage, and let Harlequins roll up some sizable sleeves and look to do it. The ugly way. What it would do for their confidence if they could strike first in the second half. Tuima, Mia Venner though with the line speed and hauling the centre down to turf. They've got an advantage though again and Scott thinks that she's spotted her way to the try line. That is a beauty. Emily Scott had options to her right and to her left but she said I've got this and down it goes. Exactly the start Harlequins would have wanted to the second half. Only fired one shot really in that first half. Had to come out and give it some real energy, some real impetus. And it's a brilliant start for them. I thought they'd gone a bit early to that left hand side. But they didn't quite get the joy when they came away from that that ball and that breakdown. But Emily Scott, such an elusive runner. So good with ball in hand. This is one I thought it went a bit early. Really good defence from Mia Venner. Comes up and out of the line, shuts it off. And then seemingly with not a huge amount on, Emily Scott just takes off. Great turn of pace. 
around the outside of Sarah Beckett, just showing the ball so Rachel Lynn doesn't turn in. And it's a great finish. Here we go, now we've got a game. You can see just what it means. This really is the big game. This one matters. And Langi Tuima, who's been okay. fairly metronomic this season, has to just watch that one head out wide. But what a start to the second half. Brilliant start. And, you know, you talk about Harlequins, and they've not had the season that they would have wanted to so far in those four four first four games, but they've got some brilliant players, brilliant individuals, and you saw that there from Emily Scott. Ellie Kildun's the same. Give the players with pace, with footwork ability, ball in space. Gloucester Harbury do not believe in short restarts. George hurls that up towards the 22. Quinns regather. Taken back in. Killed on from inside her 22. Sends it end over end. It's tricky to gather. And so it proves. Harlequins, a different team so far. Yeah, again, just simple things like exiting really well. Ellie Kill done in that slot. Looked like she tried to spiral it, didn't quite catch it right, which is probably why Emerson couldn't really if you're in front, just make sure you're see not the flight of the ball as she'd wanted to. She attacked it as if she was going to catch it on the fall, but it's never going to get there. Sometimes really hard to judge the flight of a ball when it's a bit scrambled like that. Conventional kicks, hard to, uh, easy to catch when they're flying nicely end over end, but something that's a little bit more, almost the, the kicks Crunch. that haven't been kicked correctly as <laughs> such are the harder ones to catch. I caught up with head coach Amy Crunch. Turner in the week and she said, we want to play unconventionally. I don't think she meant kicks quite like that, but they all count. And now Harlequins with the put in just inside the half to Ema on an incisive line manages to grab an extra couple of meters over the top onto Mayhew first time we've said her name it's indicative of the change in momentum of this match that we're now starting to talk about Quinn's players Scott gathers the bouncing ball it's a tricky one for Lini no He's been going so well in a golden jersey for Australia. Player of the match against Wales in WXV. Instrumental in Australia's win against Les Bleus. And now with their new head coach, Joe Yap. Who knows what the Australians might go on to achieve. It was Lochner, the towering South African, who was acting scrum half at the last breakdown. But usual service is resumed. Usual service in the form of Langi Tuima looking for gaps. Lini with Mayhew in support. Connie Powell wanted that, the acceleration, and then the offload too. Quinns have the bit between their teeth and then some. Killed on with the fend on George. It's high and speculative to Ema with the kick chase. <laughs> Monaghan, who finished so explosively early on in that first half, and now George with the kick pass. Got that forward. Lund can't quite gather. Over. Kicked away. Hunt onto new signing Carson. Take him and back. back to George. Carrying's all well and good, but when you've got a flaky George on your side, just let them kick it long. But not to a danger runner like Kill Dunn. Okay. She also drops it onto her laces. It's all backwards, back. all backwards. Scott juggles it once, twice, thrice. Up it goes, looking to find herself, and she does. That is cute. What a shot that was. No, out now. A moment of sparkle, and then a moment of 
pure obliterating power. Ball and playtime in this second half has been astronomical. I was just thinking the exact same thing, and this is the moment now where oh, I was about to say <laughs> as players start to get tired, you really see some holes opening up in the middle. Yeah, okay. Really long passage of play. Replacements, please. Again, Emily Scott just showing all her talent. Just picks her head up. Little chip and chase regathers, offloads off. it. Offloads it again to Flo Robinson, who gets absolutely mullered by Sam Monahan. There's some offloads you want, and there's some that you think, I wish you'd have kept hold of that one. And she leaves the field. And that will be her final involvement of the afternoon, being briefly origamied by Sam Monahan. She's off, which means that to the delight of all those gathered here, Lucy Packer, England's Lucy Packer, is on. Back from an ankle injury. A little rattle of excitement just went around this place. Yeah, so good to see Lucy back. Unfortunately, missed out on WXV with that ankle injury really late on in pre-season. So great to see her back. We'll be, add some real energy to this Harlequin side. That was slick from the line out in the first phase. Really puncturing Harlequin's defensive line, but they reset well as Neve Jones. Away, so brilliantly over, off the bench against Chiefs that Sean Lynn said he just couldn't not start her this week. She has a go. Roll away. Interestingly, Gloucester are going to this Thank tight game a little bit now. Obviously conceded early doors in that second half, just deciding to keep things a little bit tighter, rumble through the middle a little bit, get themselves back into this game through a bit of possession. Just a knock on. It was forward pass by uh, Gloucester, actually, so it'll be a scrum Harlequins. Forward pass and then forward a knock-on. Forward pass by Gloucester. Well, I'm so delighted to say that we yeah. have been joined by a member of okay, so the Harlequins coaching side, Ross Chisholm, and so we've just been joined by Harlequin coaches all afternoon scrum, who've played in big games. Good to be back at HQ. As a forward pass first, Definitely. It's a wonderful occasion to be able to play in big game. It's brilliant to see so many people yeah, here I supporting the women's the game the and an exciting opportunity for us. A big uh, 30 minutes still to okay, come up, and up hopefully then, we can go. keep going. The only place to start is with the opening 60 seconds of this second half. How pre-planned was that move off the kickoff? <laughs> yeah, it was actually. We've identified a bit of space there. Um, executed really, really well. And to be able to take that on the move from Emily Scott was brilliant to get us on the front foot. Well, it certainly worked. You've got a proper foothold in the school ball. But what was the message at half-time with regards to then maintaining that Six. momentum? Because Gloucester Hartbury are a side that finished strong. Yeah, we spoke about, you know, that first 30 minutes, Gloucester came out really strong. Uh, we didn't really keep our discipline. We gave them easy into the games with penalties and turnovers. And in that back end of the 15 minutes into the sec uh, first Balls half, we managed live. to increase the tempo on the game, quick taps, look to move the ball. So the message was very much, let, let's start this second half, how we finish the first. Yep. Thank you so much for your time, Ross. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Push Thank back. you very much. Cheers. One, two and three replacements, please. Thank Changes you. being run That's by nice. Sean Lynn. An entire front row switch for Gloucester Hartbury. So off come Mackenzie Carson, Neve Jones and Cecilia Tuafalotu. And on come Kelsey Jones, L. Perry and Laura Delgado. Emily, that is an abundance of riches to be able to bring on at this point. I was just thinking the same, it's such strength in depth. And when you think as well, you've still got okay, Mont Muir on the sidelines with, uh, with a wrist injury, you know, another international to bring back into a front row fold. It's just, it's crazy at the moment for Gloucester. Kelsey Jones's first duty is completed with a plum. Line out goes to plan. We heard Ross Chisholm there, the attack coach for Harlequins, talking about how they wanted to control some tempo and just start taking things into their own hands. Well, it's Gloucester Hartbury who are going to look to do exactly that. It's been a little while since they scored. Alex away, Matthews please. just runs with such power, doesn't she? There's no second, third gear. She just does everything in fifth or sixth. <laughs> she just floors it. I hope she doesn't drive like that. Kelsey Jones, Wales's finest. Ball stolen, it's Lange to Ema at the heart of that one and down the short side go the hosts. Kildan manages to 
clean that one up, and then another player who only knows how to accelerate chases her own. Fight. Lund's in at nine. Then, what a carry, what a carry from El Terry. The Red Rose back playing rugby after giving birth to baby Bert a couple of years ago. It's like she's never been away. Monaghan with Velcro on her fingertips, manages to keep part of that one. It's a one-on-one, -on -one. it's Singh against Kildon. That's worth the ticket price alone. No. But the tackle's made and so is the steal as Cleal rumbles up and over the top of Castellucci. Let go, let go. Let go of the... Come here. Both of you, come here. Both of you. Um, first of all, you can't hold players off the ball. Second of all, you can't react when they do it. Leave it with me. As soon as the ball goes, we move away. The penalty is against you for pushing. You're on our radar. Brian Cleo, I'm sure, has been told off a few times by referees, but again, she's just so passionate, doesn't take a backward step. This is the matchup, this is the one on one. Over 15 here, on 15 for Club Rugby, but also Move. competing Move. constantly for that international shirt as well. Emma Singh, That's Vieli Kildern. Yeah, we'll check that. Great physicality from both of them, just dislodges the ball in the tackle. Vieli Kildern will be chuffed with that one. Okay. Time How are one. those two different as fullbacks? What would England be looking for from Emma Singh and from Ellie Kildun? It's a great question. I think certainly Ellie Kildun has got that electric footwork and pace that we love to see when she's got hands on ball. Backwards. You know, really developing that kicking game as well. We've seen her here, obviously, as the primary kicker. And Emma Singh, brilliant kicker, especially off the tee, handler of the ball, an elusive runner. She's so strong in contact, stronger than, you know, her size suggests. So I think both of them are brilliant prospects in that jersey. Quinn's alleviate a little bit of pressure, but it's heaped straight back on with on, carries from that woman Singh and also from her, but now the ball's turned over again. It's possession tennis at Twickenham as Lucy Packer scampers away from the clutches of Hunt. Play on, not back by pink, play on. Backwards. Ball not backwards, so the ball stays with the hosts. Here's Lochner, the netballer turned rugby player. She might as well be a sprinter. Look at her go, galloping across open prairie in Twickenham. Killed on now. Another easy runner. Referee. Happy enough with that one. That could have been crucial from Castellucci. Yeah, she's definitely made a valid attempt to try and catch that ball. Line out. OK, we'll take the line out. We've got some players down. Time off, please. Always tough, but brilliant pick on that short side from Harlequins. Giving the big girls an opportunity to run in some space. Great, great power forward from them. Just making easy yards. And again, that Maisie running from Ellie Kildern. Just trying to create that two on one on this short side. Didn't quite pull it off because of Castellucci's hands in the way. But again, Harlequins just slowly starting to build. They're starting to get a foothold in this. They're starting to see a bit more of attacking. Big game, our annual blockbuster in the festive rugby calendar, a merry mainstay. And it's the men up a little bit next. That'll be on at 4.45 on TNT Sports 2. It's an occasion that Harlequins haven't lost that since 2014, but those men, George Skivington's men, they will be hoping to snap that streak. Up before then, of course, it's a DJ set from Joel Corey. We've got a graphic for that one. It is the biggest game in the calendar, this, Caden Murley says. So don't you go anywhere. Okay. The Harlequins have made a couple of changes. You can see there, two of their forwards, Sylvia Tirani and Babal Alatcha, the replacement props on and into the fray, an Italian and a Springbok. 
and also wearing 16 in the scrum cap, Karis Phillips, the Welsh international. So good to see her back after that slightly concerning looking neck injury she picked up against Saracens. But she's back and fighting fit. And they've 25 minutes, Emily, to make up 14 points on the reigning champions. How tangible will that feel? <laughs> well, I think it can vary at the moment. It's um, it's right within their grasp. We spoke about international replacements coming on for Gloucester when the front row were replaced, and we've just seen the exact same for Harlequin. So there's talent aplenty. It's just how well it can all knit together. But loads of fresh, fresh feet on the ground now. 14, the difference. Gloucester Hartbury haven't yet scored in the second half. Be careful with that line. Mayhew's in off her wing, and there is so much space out on that far touch line where Freya Orkin has also entered the fray. Tackle had to come in there. Harlequins making their fifth foray into enemy territory. Tarani just managing to evade the tackle, looks for the offload, gets it away. Was that shot a bit high? It was. Arm goes out, handbrake comes off. Tuima floats it to kill Dunn. It is awfully congested on that near touchline. Six, seven metres out. Tarani slammed to turf. What a shot from Sarah Beckett. That's got to count as two tackles, surely. Taka. On to Lochney, they're still playing advantage here, Harlequins. They can really hit the gamble button, the big red entertainment button if they want. Ten phases yeah, now. Are you going to be showing it? Really turning the screw, has that gone down? Oh, it has! And Harlequins and all the Twickenham will just start to believe. That is three unanswered tries, and there are flags everywhere you look. How good, how good is this second half turning out to be? A real contest, a real game we're now seeing. Babawa Lacha onto the field, making an immediate impact. Big carry through the middle to start it all off, and eventually ends up scoring the try. But again, Emily Scott is so good at the line. And Harlequin's just getting their offloading uh, game going a little bit okay. as well, aren't they? Just starting to break through that Gloucester Try defense good, that's George. normally so, so tight. Brilliant finish. The patience we perhaps didn't see in the first half when Harlequins were in the 22. Now really seeing. And I'd love to be in that Gloucester huddle. I'd love to hear what's being said. Whether it's all emotion and energetic or whether it's actually tactical, how do we get ourselves not back into the game, but certainly from a momentum point of view, how do we get ourselves back into this game? You just see the patience from Harlequin. You know, when you're set like that, I think they were on a penalty advantage as well, weren't they? So it was next, a free next shot, next shot, kept it tight, okay. reaped the rewards. Sorry, it's an injury substitute at the back, thank you. The Springbok women's captain. Okay, time back on, let's go. Having a third try for the host as George Skivington watches on. Well, if he'd been keeping track of the score when he got on that coach, I dare say he was a lot happier than he is right now because we have got quite the finish on our hands. As Clicky George, who used to play a fair bit of football, sends that one dribbling across the grass. Quinns have the restart in their clutches and they have Gloucester Hartbury very much in their sights. Taken back in. Kill done. Picks out Singh. Now this is George dancing in field. We talk all about what she does kicking the ball, but it's what she does with her footwork. And speaking of footwork, Mia Vanna is just having a party this season, but dropped. And that looks an uncomfortable fall. Absolutely essential tackle there. I think it was Lucy Packer. <laughs> oh, Gloucester needed something, didn't they? Initially from that kickback return, Clayton George, look at that, an offload out the back door. Mia Venice skips 
skips through a defence. She has no oh, right to get close. through. I've been consistent on all Lucy three, Packer, sure. who is no slouch, manages to cover and make that tackle. It certainly doesn't look comfortable just on that landing. But how good to see somebody of Mia Venner's quality with some ball, skipping through the middle. Great attempt from Lucy Packer and cover from Izzy May Mayhew. Oh, I really hope she's okay. She's had a pretty tough run of injuries, a couple of big ones, still so young and had such a brilliant start to this season. I'll work for her Thanks. She's an absolute superstar in the making, but also right now playing so well. Sean Lynn describing her as something special. And the conversations have been happening with England. We hope to see her representing them once again. Years on from that debut she made at just 17. You can understand why he looks a little worried. But a very able deputy in Kelly Taylor, another Red Rose, top try scorer in this league back in 2019. Formerly Kelly Smith, of course, that's how everybody knows her, flying Kelly Smith. Yeah, it's so good to see her back as well. She had a big injury that kept her out for a really long time over a season. But she's quality, pure pace, tenacity in tackles. So look forward to seeing her on the ball. Let wait, wait. What a scrum from the reigning champions, Lucy Packer, as her work cuts out and she carves her way up the blind side. That's three visits now without a point for Gloucester Hartbury. You have to wonder how much their stuttering start to the season is affecting them at the moment. If you're in front, hold. Just three games played so far as Ellie Kildon just does a classic Ellie Kildon and leaves defenders flailing. She's on hand to dribble that one through and it really has become a standoff between these two mercurial fullbacking talents. Delgado, Georgia Brock, soon be on, he suspects. Ball lost the heartbreak as the ball is tipped out wide, and what an introduction this is to the game for Kelly Taylor. She's been on for all of 60 seconds, and she might have just bought the reigning champions a little bit of breathing room in this one. How good is that? It's just pure quality, so simple. Just might have another look at this pass as to whether it crept forwards or not. I'm sure they'll be looking at that in the background. Just slow it down a sec, George. Well, but brilliant yeah. work along the back line again. Hannah Jones just comes off that right foot straight and delivers that ball. Just on here, actually. And Kelly Taylor, we've spoken a lot about her. She's just come onto the field, gets an opportunity to stretch her legs to show a clean yeah, pair of heels. The crowd don't like it in here, it that's for sure, just as they've just seen the replay pass. on the big screen. OK, Dan, you're going to show me a forward pass on the screen. Dan Jones, our TMO for the afternoon. Yeah, that's right. Man. This is your best angle, George, out of the hands forward. Perfect, clearly travels out the hands forward, so it's no try in the scrum to Quince. Agreed. No try. Forward pass. Well, what a result for the Harkins faithful gathered here, and what a treat they have in store a little bit later on this afternoon. Here come the heroes. Alex Dombrand, Joe Lawnsbury, it's a real feast of rugby, and of course, that man there. I wonder what he's arrived in today. He does love. Oh, well, how about the gold headphones on Marcus Smith? <laughs> Prince of Twickenham with the crown jewels on. Bind. That's on just after this, so make sure Set. you stick with us. Big game 15 coming on up Wait. on TNT. Too far. No, no, no. Bit of a sense of impatience creeping in here with Gloucester Hartbury, perhaps. A little bit. You just we spoke a lot about Harlequins and penalties in the first half, and tides just seem to have turned a little bit in this second. But 
you know, even though they had a disallowed try, sometimes that can really give you a an energetic pump up in terms of what you've just been able to create. Yes, you didn't quite finish it off, but actually just showing a little bit of ascendancy there. So to concede a penalty yeah. Let's do that now. in that manner, a bit of a Change soft one, five, please. frustrating Hands on from a Gloucester please point just of view. Wait until it's lifted. And you're always in front of that ball. Harlequins leading this second half, 12 points to nil. Make another change. It's Kiara Cooney, the Ireland international. She's on. Caitlin Leaney has played her part in this one. That's good. The Wallaroo heads off. Harris Phillips makes this one count, and Fleming. No Harlequin has hit more breakdowns than the open side this season. She is so industrious. And speaking of endeavour and industry, Shauna Brown back out of retirement and turbocharged at the moment. Here is Orkin with the chicken wing offload to Ellie Kildon. Champagne rugby a day early before New Year's. Packer. On to Lochner, who has delivered all of the abrasive rugby that Amy Turner promised us pre-match. There's nothing abrasive about that. Ellie Kildon, silky smooth as ever. Wondered if that might have been knocked on through contact, but the referee was happy enough. Scott, who's been puppet master extraordinaire in this second passage, gets it on to Burford and then in turn back on to Walker. It has been one-way traffic of late. Harlequins back into the 22. There's blood in the water. We've had three visits each this half, but Harlequins have scored a brace. And Gloucester Hartbury haven't managed anything as Tuima looks to make mischief. Hard is wise to it. That's the turnover. The bench celebrate in front of us. Cecilia Tuipilotti liked that one. And they're the moments we spoke about in the first half that can really, when you're under the pump, when everything's going the opposite way, can lift you up. But this is the great hands from Harlequins earlier on in the in the set. Just starting to show a really nice bit of variation. A couple of inside balls, a couple of big big ones through the middle, a little bit of offloading going on. And it's that variation that will disrupt a really solid defence like Gloucester. Well, Gloucester's penalty kick didn't quite find touch. But the ball got knocked on there. Well, we were just admiring Marcus Smith's headphones. Let, let's talk about threads, Emily, because these two sides have rolled out brand new spanking kits for this occasion. Harlequins is the famous quarters, okay, but with a kind of start. festival twist. Gloucester Hart very well, it's the big okay. top. An homage to their circus nickname. It's giving Barbie, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, and it's a women's only shirt that people can buy and people have been buying. I know we've seen a couple around the stadium and I know Gloucester have come out in force. Um, but it's a, it's a brilliant idea. Um, James Forrester, I believe, was behind it all, designed a couple, showed a few of the girls. <laughs> they said no, and he went back to the drawing board, <laughs> designed another one, and they loved this one. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great idea, and the girls look fantastic in it. I know they've been really behind the whole thing. They absolutely do, but it's the quarter jerseys applauding now. Quinns with the penalty at the scrum. It's been a mini battle an angle and the ground. within this one. And of late... It's been Rachel Burford and her side celebrating. Edge of the line, please. Yeah, there's exactly what we were talking about earlier in terms of penalties. That's, that's specifically at the scrum, but certainly in the second half as well. Gloucester just on the wrong side of it this half as Harlequins were in that first half. Just gives the other team such a good foothold in the game. Wait. Coming. Oh, Harlequins renaissance in this one has coincided with things starting to get a little bit busier in here. Remember, there is a world record that they're shooting for here at Twickenham. 15,000 at the last big game. They're hoping for more this time around. And they can inspire their team to this one. The first one. Wow. 
seven the difference as Sarah Bonner wearing six for the first time this season ducks ahead, dips the shoulder, carries hard. There's a high shot a couple of phases back, so Harlequins again with the advantage. Great tackle again by Sam Monaghan. Really physical, really fronting up. Again, Harlequins just this sustained period of pressure. Great line yeah, by Langy just Tweema, shoulder, just gets caught a little bit high, there's nothing, not a huge amount in that, there. but does go high, gives them a brilliant opportunity here for Langy to stick this right in the corner. As she's managed to do right on that five metre line. 12, what, 11 and a half minutes left, seven point game. Amy Turner looks a bit happier. Only marginally, <laughs> as I'm corrected. I think Come on, then. it's fair to say Let's that with 20 please. minutes played, she would never have imagined that Harlequins would have the darts five metres out to possibly level this one up. They have turned an almighty pink and white tide. And this would be a serious score. This would be a bonus point score. Twickenham holds its breath as the quarter jerseys creep towards the whitewash. Gloucester Harvey turn it over. Princeton E first. And an almighty opportunity goes begging for Amy Turner's women. It's an amazing effort from all of those forwards involved. You went in Looked the like they had a really good setup. Too. Looked like they were going forward nicely, staying nice and patient. See Sarah Bonner in the middle of all that, really driving. Gloucester come around that outside okay, and go. then, I don't know if let's you go. heard the referee say Harlequin was down first. Is it Sarah Beckett under all of that? It is, she's just got herself under all of that. Beth and Lewis, nobody has to move at that point. You could see the way that they celebrated it backs and forwards. Sometimes moments like that are as good as scoring tries when you stop the other team. Crouch. Bind. Set. Sarah Beckett, who won a premiership with Harlequins, now causing them to come unstuck right on the try line as Alex Matthews makes 15 metres all by her world-class self. George. Wax it clear. Just drains a little bit of pressure. It's a brilliant exit. Big players stand up in big games and big moments like this. Alex Matthews with a Number five scrum Gloucester, on her please. own five metre line. Making 10, 15 metres going forward. Thanks. And then just that safe kick, get it off the field. Opportunity to make some substitutions. We talked about the mentorship of Zoe Oldcroft. Well, she's taken Steph Els, who's on now, wearing 19, beneath her highly accomplished arm. A fellow Scarborough RUFC grad. Who's got More. such a bright future ahead of her. But again, here come Don't Harlequins. It's Karis that. Phillips with the ball at the base. All the bodies piling in. Told to use it by both the referee and the Gloucester Hartbury players. I was about to say, I'm not sure the referee said it yet, but the Gloucester Hartbury players certainly have. Use it now. Use it now, please. There we go. That's the voice that matters. They've made some headway, though, and Rachel Burke, one of the finest passes in the game, picks out Scott and Ellie Kildun somehow. Oh, but somehow Tatiana Hurd trading skills out beneath the floodlights now at Twickenham because it's darkened right as the rugby begins to set this place alight. Hunt. Now this is Perry. Hunt again. George is there with all sorts of options to her outside. Lund now. Manages to carve her way past the tiring Harlequins defensive line, but the ball's popped up and into the welcoming embrace of Emily Scott. Packer to Brown. Let go. 
Seven and a half minutes remaining. Seven points, the difference. Kildon has Orkham instead heads towards the far touchline. Just get the sense that this game is just breaking up a little bit. You've got some tired bodies out there now, those girls that have played the whole game. Turnovers are plenty. Might only need one player just to stand up in one of those moments and take it on. Brilliant turnover. Sylvia Tarani with a very festive scrunchie, pilfering that one. It's now about which side can just manage this period. It's important that Gloucester don't just try and close the game out. Brilliant turnover from Tarani. Look at that body position. Gloucester players just not quite there quick enough, not enough work on the floor in terms of the ball presentation. Come on, let's go. Yeah which team can now manage this period of the game. Obviously, Harlequins need to score, and they need to score more than once if oh, they want to get the victory. But important that Gloucester don't just shut up shop, play the territory, get in the right areas of the field, continue to look after the ball as they have done for large parts of this game. Okay. And how brilliant to see Tabai Matson out on the pitch, warming up with Connie Powell, toting a tackle bag, so involved in the women's programme. He's a brave man, actually. He was holding that tackle shield for Connie as she was warming up, hitting him back. But yeah, awesome to see just that connection between in the club between men's and women's teams. You know, so much knowledge and um, experience to be shared. So it's great to see him so involved. Oh, Again, on the hunt for that fourth, possibly levelling score. Being the better side in this second Incredible. half for large periods, but they've got to make it count. Scott and Kildon, two of their classiest operators, just linking up Packer with the swiftest of services onto Fleming and now Latcher, who hurls else to the floor. Turned over though. And now Oster Hartbury through Lund. Looking to make inroads through the midfield. The way ahead of her was thick with quarter jerseys, but she didn't bat an eyelid. The turnover comes the other way. On a knife edge, this one. Who will be the first to strike? Will it be killed on? Kicks it straight into George and out it trickles. Oh, look at what it means for all the subs. They're up on their feet. They're miles away from the bench. This is the initial turnover from L. Perry. So strong on the ball, keeps a hold of it, takes it with her. Lost to have an opportunity to strike. And then Ellie Kildun, a big fend off on Emma Singh down this near side. Oh, I don't know whether she should have kicked it. I would have loved to have seen her use that footwork in a phone box. Keep a hold of that ball. But I'd also back her to win any foot race when the ball's on the ground. So. Oh, it's an exciting last five minutes. It really is. And what a moment for young Nicole Wide on the Harlequins, wearing 20. There she is, there with Shauna Brown. Okay, you can just get everyone in line with you. The under 20s athlete come all the way through their centre of excellence. This is her first appearance of the season. She was an unused substitute against Ealing in round one. Thanks. Sorry, and now sorry, here sorry. she finds herself beneath the lights at Twickenham with a game in the balance against the champions of the Premiership. The Harlequins bench all on their feet. These are anxious times. OK, tennis coming off, that's great. And you can see there just how finely poised this is. Yeah, okay, it's no a slightly different story to if we would have Clip that okay. up from the first half in terms of efficiency, visits, points. So important when you get into those areas to really come away with something, just to keep building pressure, to keep turning that scoreboard over. Harlequin certainly have up their game with that in that in this second half. Someone they really want to keep on the field is Emily Scott. She's been at the heart of this second half resurgence. Yeah, she has. She, she brought the energy, she brought the, the moments that really uplift, uplifted this team in that second half. 
so much experience either at 10 or 15, both in the sevens game and the 15s game. A real shame to leave her, uh, see her leaving the field as she is. Well, she's clapped all the way off. Such a favour of the Stoop faithful, many of whom have travelled here today. As Phillips finds Bonner, but doesn't do so with a legal throw. Music to the ears of Gloucester Harbury to get the ball back as the seconds ebb away. Not sure. Just see that clock continuing to tick. Five minutes, thank you. Some of the boys, coaches Just watch on. on. I'm sure supporting the girls. I know they're involved in lots of the skill sessions that they do working with <laughs> individuals. <laughs> Lovely little wave. But yeah, big moments these now. Five minutes left on the clock. Gloucester will be keen to get themselves well out of here. Big kick chase. Crouch. Get Glo uh, Harlequins as far away from their try line as they possibly can. Bind. Set. Hunt feeds the pink and um, white beast. It's quite possible she'll go the distance here. She played 80 against Axeter, so did Flaky George. Sean Lynn has his most trusted lieutenants. And Harlequins producing this performance have necessitated that they're still with us into the 76th minute. And a really big performance, you know, irrelevant of almost what goes on to happen now in the rest of this game. They needed something to build the rest okay, of their Holden season on because it hasn't been the best start for them. And this has been a really, really positive step in that direction. Amy Turner said in the week, this is our occasion. It's our world record, it's our club, it's our big game. We're doing it for each other. And they really have done. They've overperformed in so many ways in the second half, particularly. As Bowalacha with Wythe in support. Gets them back into the Gloucester Hartbury half. Tarani, a woman possessed ever since her arrival. And now Ella Cromack. Was on and wearing 22 as the ball is pinched oh, and pummeled. Always under pressure. We'll take the knock on then. But back will come for the scrum. Into touch, under pressure. <laughs> Fortunately, oh they get okay. Enough. The knock we'll on. Take the scrum, please. Didn't call it as advantage over when obviously they kicked it's the ball because it did go straight out. Rachel Burf is just asking that question, as she would do all her experience. Knows it's a tight one. Knows there's not le long left on the clock. You're trying to. Clutch onto anything that you possibly can to give yourself another opportunity in this game. But Gloucester, again, interestingly, what do I know? Trying to run it out from their own 22. Space on the edge, gave themselves an opportunity. That's how they play. He'd have loved, he'll, I'm sure he'll love an opportunity to run out of his 22 as well, given it in the next game. Crouch. Bind. Two and a half to play. As things stand, Gloucester Hartbury take five big fat points from the big game. Harlequins with a losing bonus. And it's fine, fine margins as the circus looking for their first points of the second half. Singh is there. She's got looms to her outside. That pass needs to go, and there it does. Kill done. Makes the tackle, forces the error. Different ball. OK, we'll double check which way it's going, but we'll start setting up. Sorry, what are you asking me? It's who's lining up? It's a great who's strike play. They come back. Woods off. From Gloucester initially. I think they're just trying that to check whose Gloucester, hand that came so off. Um, Quinn's ball. Yeah. Quinn's ball. It was a Gloucester hand, so it's a, a Quinn's ball, but... Two minutes, thank you. Great strike play from Gloucester. There's that little run around, Mo Hunt coming out the back. Okay, how many? Loads of open space on this near side. I wondered whether Harlequins, Emerson could have many, dropped it on the toe and just pushed it deep into Harlequin's territory. Ellie Kildone came five, up six. and closed as she had to do in that situation. Five, five. Just a bit of an opportunity in behind. As it is, Harlequin's get the ball back and I'm sure they won't be kicking this one too far. It's the outside arm. Agonising moment the there for Phillips. Straight. That one drifts from the vertical. And the exhalation from Tabai Matson says it all. Gloucester okay. Hartbury will have the put in. With 60 seconds remaining as the rain just starts to fall here at Twickenham. Sorry, yeah. 
starts to fall on increasingly populated stands. Phillips, Tarani and Latcher. Jones, Perry and Delgado. Bind. One final tussle in the drizzle. Time off. Let's move in, Phil. Well, it's a huge scrum. I mean, look at that. How good is that? Okay, Almost moodier because the rain started to come down, but what an occasion this is. As I say, the drizzle just starting to come down towards the end of this game, but huge scrum. Harlequins arguably had the ascendancy in this area most of the game. They can nick one back here. It Time on. Crouch. Add to a really exciting finish. Bind. Set. Seconds remain of a big game, which has proven so much more of a tussle than we might dare to hope for as George finds Jones. Singh is there. Taylor denied a little bit earlier on, but now on the hunt, the arch predator. Go, it is Kelly Taylor. Tackle a roll first. Gloucester Parkbury. The clock's gone red, but they will not kick it out. They will go and hunt of another. They want to end on a high note. So robust has been the Quinn's defence in this second half. So ambitious have been the hosts. Heard options. She chooses Jones and now on to Lund with one to be. Lund skipping, scampering, scoring. What a finish. I said it was really important that Gloucester didn't shut up shop and just try and close this one out. And they certainly didn't do that. They've continued to move the ball. Even when the drizzle and the rain started to come down, still hitting those edges, stretching Harlequins. Cheers, sir. Width to width. And it's a brilliant finish in the end. Just really simple hands. Started on one side of the field. And then as it comes back the other way, Clayky George again to the line. Tatiana Heard always involved. Simple draw and pass on the end. It just gives Rachel Lund that one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Great hands on the end. Brilliant finish. And that's the ruthless right, nature of this Gloucester side. Thanks, you spoke about it. They didn't need to continue playing, but they wanted to take away that losing bonus point. You see what it means to Sean Lynn. <laughs> He's pumped up. the perfect finish to what has been an intriguing tussle. Gloucester Harpery, the reigning champions, make it 13 straight wins on the road and go four from four in the Premiership as they continue their defence of the title. But didn't Harlequins make it interesting? The best performance of their season so far and something to proudly hang their hat on. They have right royally entertained all of us here at Twickenham, but it is the Circus who take the spoils. A bonus point victory to the tune of 31 points to 19.